the last session for the day. Uh, welcome, Mr. Philip Jones. You you can start your presentation. Thanks, thanks, and uh, I guess I should say thanks for organising uh, Flaskcon. It's really exciting to have a, a conference on Flask after many years of seeing Django once. So. That's great. Uh, but today I'm going to talk about async Flask and introduce Quart to you. And uh, if you want to follow along, I've posted a link to the slides in the uh, Discord forum. But you can also find them here on my site. So pgjones.dev slash talks if you want to find them. Uh, just a quick bit about me. So you can find me in most places as PG Jones on GitHub and GitLab. Uh, including Quart and Hypercorn, which I'll mention later, which are the two projects I maintain. Uh, I've got a blog at pgjones.dev, and on Twitter, there's an extra D, so if you wanted to tweet me or anything, then uh, please remember that. In terms of what I, what I do in my kind of day job, I co-founded a company called Moneyed at the start of the year, and if you're in the UK, and you're wondering what you should do with your money to reach your long-term goals like retirement or house buying or anything like that, then this is the, the service for you. And I'd encourage you to take a look at money.co.uk for this app. Okay, right, onto the bit that I think you're interested in. So I wanted to start this talk by kind of introducing what is basically, I think, where we all start with a Flask app. And I think it also like represents a lot of the Flask apps in production in that uh, it does a little bit of, uh, of work with the database, that's either putting something in or in this case, let's say taking something out and then returns the, the results. So a lot of CRUD apps, if you will, that create, uh, replace, update, delete or something like that, I can't remember, uh, are like this. And, uh, for the purposes of this and what I'm going to talk about, I'm going to say this is equivalent to time.sleep. So if you want to play with this alongside, you can just switch this line in and not have to set up any database connection. Now, I think many of us probably started running this production with app.run, I did, and uh, hopefully they really then certainly realized that this isn't how it's meant to be used and you're supposed to use the whiskey or WSGI server. And so for me, that one is Unicorn. And by default, Unicorn has synchronous workers. And I'm gonna talk about this uh, in relation to async. And so what this means is if there's two requests that are coming at the same time to this synchronous worker, it does them one after the other. So the first request takes a second, but the second request takes two seconds because it needs to wait for the first request to finish before it can start. And you'll probably notice this in production. And what you'll see is some bad tail latency at times. And this could be quite frustrating and annoying. So the typical solution is probably to add more synchronous workers, that helps, or maybe use threads. But I would say neither of those uh, really use your resources all that well. So what are you typically switch to is a async worker. And for me, like I've used Eventlet. Uh, there's also Gavent and Minehound, but I've used Eventlet for quite some time. And this works really well. So I think I could have also, kind of stop the talk here and say like async flask does exist. You just use eventlet or Gavent, and uh, it's very uh, kind of production tested and if you like battle hardened and it works really well. And if you send off the two requests at the same time here, they seem to take the same time and they both finish at the same time. And what's happening is that it's not that they're both running simultaneously, they're not running in parallel, but what Eventless is doing is switching from handling this request to this request and then back whenever it's waiting for something. And by waiting, I mean it's waiting for IO. So when you make a request to the database that's IO, the CPU on your server no longer needs to do anything. It just needs to wait uh, for, the, for the results to come back. And that time I put in earlier just represents that. It's also waiting for that sleep to finish. So this is what Eventlet's doing. It's switching between these, it's often called green threads or maybe even context. It's switching from request one to request two when it can't do anything on request one. And you can have obviously many requests and this scales uh, much more like uh, efficiently than, than threads or many synchronous workers or processors. So this is, this is quite nice. But the downside of it, I think, is it's not really clear what's going on. So I've said that what Eventless is doing is switching between these different requests when it can. Uh, but when does it do it? If I look at this code, how do I know when that's happening? And I kind of know 
because I can reason about it. It's going to happen at this line. There's also not many lines of code in this one, so it makes life easier. But there's nothing to tell me that that's going to happen. It's also the case that uh, if, there were to, if this were to go wrong in any way, uh, it'd be quite, it's, well, it's actually quite hard to uh, debug. And this is because event letting event monkey patch the standard library to, to work with their system. So if you go locking uh, the code before you add event let and after, it's quite different. So it would get very hard to, to debug if it goes wrong. That said, event let and event are quite reliable now. So it's, you'll probably not see that. But I think this is part of the reason why a sync await has it been introduced into Python as very explicit keywords. Because now I think it's, it's quite obvious where this is going to yield. I could have 20 lines before this and 20 lines after. And I know that these previous 20 lines will run, then it will yield, then 20 lines after, and then it will probably yield after the return. So it's very easy to reason about now. And equally, a lot of the more modern kind of third party libraries are async await only. So in Flask, not only, like if you could do this in Flask, not only could you better reason about it, but you'd also be able to use these new third party libraries, which would be great. So I think it's fair to say a lot of us, in, in definitely including myself, would like to be able to do this in, in Flask, have an async def root handler. Uh, so even though, like, as I said, you can do asynchronous coding in Flask with event let and event. Really, this is what I want. So I started to look into this a few years ago and uh, uh, I didn't find so much. And I, the reason I didn't find uh, the way to do this, I think is because there's a problem. And that problem is that sync awaits are, if you will, viral keywords, right? So if I want to run the code of a, of a coroutine function, an async def, I have to await it. So if I took this into account for Flask and I say, well, I know I want a sync def, so now I need to make everything in Flask a sync wet def because I have to await everything. And it goes all the way through. So if I did this and I changed Flask like this so that the full dispatch request was now an async def, I'd have to await it everywhere. But an extension that already exists won't have done that. So this will be synchronous still, and then this will fail because this won't return something that's awaitable. And so the initial problem, like with just adding this to Flask or just changing it to async def based is that you'll break the extensions. And I think given the strength of the Flask ecosystem, this is not really an acceptable solution. So there needs to be some other way to do it. So I think that's why uh, Flask so far hasn't had this ability. There has been attempts though to like add the functionality which we want, which I think is the async def root handler. And one of the first, First was Flask AO HTTP. So if you're not familiar, AO HTTP is a uh, Python 3 only like uh, web framework and client framework. So AO HTTP, you can do client requests to servers and you can write a full server as well. Uh, it comes with a Junicorn worker. Uh, and so to run this, you add the extension and you run it in Junicorn with this worker. And it would allow you to decorate your your function with an async decorator and then use yield inside. And just a note here, yield is the precessor to await. So it was Python 3.5 that await was added. So that gives you an idea of the age of this extension. I'm afraid to say it no longer works uh, and it's no longer maintained. I think this worker is no longer maintained either. But you can see it's getting closer and really indicating at what we'd like. There was another attempt by, I think it's Mr. Don, but I'm not entirely sure what their name is, so I'm just guessing there. But they took Flask, forked it, and uh, edited it. And they edited Flask and Verksug to allow a coroutine decorator and the yield. Again, it required the AO HTTP worker, and so it no longer works. And I'm not entirely sure it worked with the extensions either, but it was a, another attempt I found at trying to add this to Flask. But as I guess is, is coming across now, neither of these worked or work anymore. They might have worked at the time. And so I wanted something that, that did allow this. And what I did was take the Flask API and re-implement it using a sync await. So this is Quart. So Quart is, uh, hopefully you'll find the same as Flask, except it's called Quart and it's got a sync await in. And the early example I showed is, is this in Quart. 
So you can read uh, about court here if you're interested. And the only other no aspect to note is that you need Hypercorn to run it. So you can't use WSGI servers, you need to use an ASGI server. And I maintain Hypercorn, so that's why I'm gonna recommend that one. But it runs very similar to GUnicorn, it's got the same arguments. So you should, hopefully it's quite familiar. So this is Quartz. You can go a bit further than Flask now. So one way that you can go further than Flask if you're a sync uh, from the start is WebSockets, of course, they're very asynchronous. And you can introduce WebSockets in a way that really match how Flask does requests. So you have a WebSocket global that uh, is a context local, so you can, you can just use it in the root handler like you would a request. And so this is a very simple WebSocket handler that you probably wouldn't want to connect to because the server would just send you hello as fast as it possibly could. So it's not very good, but hopefully it gives you an idea of just how uh, easy this can be uh, in Quartz. Another way that Quartz goes a bit further, excuse me, is background tasks. So for Flask, I think you'd often spawn a thread or maybe you'd use something like Celery, although Celery is quite a lot of effort to get set up. Uh, uh, to run something in the background or to trigger a background uh, task. I think with asyncio this gets a bit easier because as long as your task is IO bound, you can just spawn it or use ensure future and this will just run in the background and the view will return 201 straight away. So this is quite nice and quite simple. And if you go onto our hypercore, uh, sorry, the court documentation, you can read a bit more about how to do this for uh, CPU bound tasks as well. Okay, so this is a kind of, well, that's a very quick introduction to Quart because it's kind of part of the talk, but not the main focus of my talk. Uh, but I'm gonna go a bit further and talk about the Quart extensions. So one of the strengths of Flask really is its, its ecosystem. And it's a, it's, it's a shame and goes back to one of my earlier slides that uh, by default, the Flask extensions can't work with the Quart. Uh, and it's this viral nature of a sync await that causes problems. So there's a lot of new Quart extensions to fill the gap. One of which is Quart Open API, which you can find here. And this allows you to decorate your routes with JSON schema uh, definitions, which are checked if you decorate your route. And a Open API or Swagger document is created for you. So if you go back to the talk talking about the uh, uh, schema testing, I've just forgotten the name, it's escaped me, the schema testing library, then if you use this extension, then you can go ahead and use that testing library to test your code, which is really nice. You can as well uh, use some Flask extensions with Quartz. So these are the extensions that don't do any IO or don't interact with the IO, because of course that will need a sync await now. Uh, an example being Flask login. And the way it works though is a bit unpleasant. So you need to import this Flask patch to start your code and this will monkey patch in the background so that there's a Flask object that can be imported by Flask login. What Flask login doesn't know is actually it's importing a Quart object that's been renamed Flask. So that's how it works in the background, which is quite nice. So I've kind of gone through a kind of argument, I hope there, that you want to be able to use a sync await, you want to write a synchronous code, and you can do in a Flask way by using Quartz. Uh, so you can go and do a synchronous code. But this last year I've been thinking actually, what you really want to do is be able to do synchronous code as well. And there are situations where you have to do synchronous code. So for example, if you using a third party library that's only, asynch uh, only synchronous, then you have no choice, right? And some of them are like, a good example are some of the more uh, advanced like OAuth libraries are synchronous, they're based on requests or URL lib underneath. And so you have no choice but to use synchronous code. And so I've been thinking about how to do this uh, in this ecosystem and how uh, really what I'm trying to do here is make it possible for users to have the best of everything. That would be the aim, which I'm gonna to get to in a minute. Uh, you, really, you can do whatever you want. And so one way I've been thinking of is actually to run Flask and Quartz on the same app at the same time. So for this example, I create a Flask app and I create a Quart app and the Flask returns hi, the Quart returns hello. And I then just set up some middleware and some whiskey middleware such that any client that requests forge slash flask gets the flask roots, in this case, just high, and likewise for court. And so this means I can put all my synchronous code in the flask roots, all my asynchronous code in the court roots, and I don't have to think as much about switching between 
between Flask and Quark because again, it's the same API. I just really need to think about whether it's synchronous or asynchronous. That's really the aim I'm trying to get at here. Like not having to think about a new framework or anything like that, just needing to think about what's asynchronous and what's not. But this is a bit fiddly. So I've been thinking about it directly in Quartz. So say uh, I have my Quart app, but I've got this bit of code that's based on requests that has to be synchronous and I want to include it in my Quart app. Well, I can just drop the async and this tells Quart that this root handler uh, is going to block. So that means that Quart will run this code in a thread, uh, therefore not blocking the event loop. So that's, that's quite helpful, that is. It means that I can have most of my routes async, but I can have a few routes that sync and it will just work. Now there's a performance hit because it's threaded, but really I've enabled what I want to do. So the performance is secondary to my aims in this case. So that's really quite good, I think. But if you go a bit further from this, it, it kind of leads you down to think that actually maybe you could do the same in Flask. Uh, instead of running the, uh, like when you have asynchronous code, maybe you can run that on a thread. So to give an example of the equivalent to the last slide, I use HPX uh, to, to do a asynchronous request. It'd be nice if this root could run in a thread, right? And then I could write async def and then it would all work and it would interact nicely with the synchronous routes. And I'd be able to use asynchronous code in Flask. And going back to the start, I basically have what I wanted. I can keep using Flask, but now I add asynchronous code. And this is a proposal I have in a pull request, which you can go look at. It's 3412. And I'll go through this code in a minute, which kind of shows how it works. But the notion is that if this is accepted, you will be able to write a sync def in Flask and run asynchronous code. I, th I think, I may be preempting, but I think it's closer to being accepted than not. Still in the balance, but I think it's nudging in the right direction for me at least, so that's great. So how does it work? Uh, so this is a simplification, <laughs> simplification. So if you want to read the pull request, you can see the full thing. But the basic idea is that you, this is what's run on the different thread and that what the code does on the other thread is create an event loop, run your function, in this case, the root, uh, the root handler. And then if it errors, set uh, the exception in the concurrent futures, or if it completes, set the results, then close the loop. So this has got what's going to run on the thread. So I set up the thread and then I run it and then I just wait in the wrapper code for the results. So this bit is quite simple. I, again, it's a bit more complicated in practice, but you can see here uh, what it would allow is it will allow this code to be run on a different thread, everything to interact as it expects and you'd be able to run async code in Flask. So, uh, what will this allow in practice or, or maybe even still what am I kind of aiming for here? And hopefully I've hinted at it, but uh, it's really about user choice. And in my mind, I'm thinking if you have no desire to use any async await code, then you use Flask. If you're, if you've mainly got uh, synchronous code, but you want to start using some async await, then hopefully soon you'll be able to do that in Flask. And then if you go half, half, maybe you use whiskey and an ASCII. So you use flask and quart at the same time, uh, as I showed earlier, if you keep going and you're mostly async, but you have some sync, you can use quart for that. And finally, if you're fully async, you can just use quart. So for me, it, it's less about performance while you do this and more about that you want to use a sync await. And I think not only does this give you a choice of where to go, it's also in my mind, like a migration path to async await. So you start off with Flask, start adding your async, keep going until you get to Quart. And you've not had to learn a new framework, you've just had to learn about async await. So I think that's quite good. So this is what I'm aiming for. Uh, so I'm gonna talk a little bit more about the future, which is very vague, so I've only got this slide for it. But the, the basic notion that I've been going down this last year is that from the start, I've wanted Quart to have the same API as Flask where they do the same thing. And originally this was by replicating everything in Quart that was in Flask. But recently it's become clear that actually I can base Quart and, well, Flask is already based on Verksook, but I can base Quart on Verksook as well. And so I've done a, 
a fair bit of work and others have done work on Verxug to make this possible. And it's getting better all the time. So Quart is becoming more, more heavily based on Verxug. And hopefully Verxug becomes like a sans IO layer for Flask and Quartz. And they're both based on it. And they both therefore share a very common API. And I think the more this goes and the more that Flask and Quart become the same because they're both using the same code. Hopefully the more these two libraries, if you will, maybe even could possibly merge in some way. It's not entirely clear how at the moment. And I still don't believe Flask itself could be fully async, much like I don't believe Quart could be fully sync. But maybe these two could, could become so close that you can switch from one or the other as your usage dictates. Uh, so that, that would be, the, I think at the moment, the ultimate long-term game. Obviously, the the greatest goal would be to have no distinguished, to have it all in Flask, but I, I still don't see how that's possible. But yes, that's what I'm aiming for. And hopefully that's given you a good idea of what Quart is and uh, where async can be introduced with Flask and where the future might lead. Uh, so hopefully that's a great place to go to questions. Would you consider Quart ready for production workloads? Uh, yeah, I think it it definitely is, yeah. I would say uh, uh, I've been using it in production for a while. I know of others, by the, especially by the, the issues I get. Uh, people are asking about it. So yes, I think definitely so now. What does God give us over uh, Javent? Or oh, what use case would I, would I choose God? And what use case Javent? Javent oh. So I think uh, I tried to mention it earlier. So for me, it's less of an argument about performance. Like uh, I think you might get, well, in, in my tests, I get better performance from Quart than Geovent, uh, but not everyone finds the same I do. But well, the reason I think you go for it is because you want to use async await. And a very strong motivating use for that is because there's a third party library like async PG, which is, I find very exciting that you want to use and you can't use it without async await. So that's the reason I think to switch. Thank you, Philip. I, I haven't used Quart recently but i did play around with it a little bit around the time you released it and uh, i find it quite interesting i was just thinking you mentioned uh, async pg just now and that's a very nice library but if you have a le legacy application usually you have uh, psycho pg2 which isn't async and do you think there is much benefit to actually migrate a flask app using SQL Alchemy and uh, asynchronous uh, database driver to Quart, or is the blocking database parts uh, gonna make it not worth it at all? Uh, well, I guess it depends what your aim is or what your motivation is. So I guess if your application is running completely fine, then I don't think there's, there's much reason to, to switch to everything still being maintained quite happily. Uh, if you want to start using async PG or any of the other kind of new async libraries, then you, you kind of have to because you, you've got no choice in that regard. In terms of, I, I guess you're hinting towards performance, like async PG mm. does look like it should outperform Psycho PG2 in, in, in most situations. And two reasons for that, I think, are that, uh, as I understand it, async PG uses a binary connection rather than a textual connection between the app and the database, which is a bit more performant and it makes use of stored procedures, uh, which I don't think Psycho PG does, so that can, can have a, a boost as well. Yeah, I, I, was, I was thinking more along the lines where you already have a lot of uh, code running on, for instance, SQL Alchemy, which isn't supported by async PG, so when async PG isn't really a viable option because rewriting would be too much work, is it still worth do you think running async uh, quart with a synchronous uh, sql alchemy for instance uh probably i guess the way you're phrasing it it doesn't sound like it would gain you much in that situation right mm. you've, you've got something that's working well and uh, it'll be a lot of effort to change so i can't imagine it would be i think maybe if in the future like the community did really start to move more to async and start dropping the sync versions, then then you'd want to switch. But yeah, in that situation, mm. it sounds like you've got something that works really well, so why change? Yeah, so in the, that case, it's better to focus on new application and greenfield projects when it comes to... Yeah, so I, I tried to show it in my slide, but 
what I'm really hoping is that you can make incremental steps. So mm. if my pull request is accepted, you can start having a few routes in Flask that are async. Then as you get more, mm. you could switch the majority to Quart and have a few sync routes. And so mm. that you can do a stepping stone type operation. Yeah, that sounds really nice, actually. I'll have to take a look at Quart again. It sounds like uh, you've made a lot of progress since I looked at it last time. <laughs> oh, yeah. Please do. Let me know what you think. Thank you, Philippe. I think that will be all. Thank you all for being present, all the speakers uh, and, and all the audience for your participation. That was all.